Hey everybody, it's Showstar and Crystal here for another error review. This time it's second chances and holy crap this was better than I remembered. What a good episode. Okay, I have a funny little stupid story to tell about this. Okay. Okay, so as you know, I didn't watch Arrow for a while but I would hear bits and pieces about the newer stuff. So, at one point I knew Laurel dies and I knew that they get a new Black Canary at some point. Yeah. I and I heard Dinah Drake is the Black Canary. Now, I also knew that Earth 2 Laurel comes along at one point. Yeah. So because Laurel's name is Dinah Laurel Lance, at one point I believed that Earth 2 Laurel becomes good, joins the team, and they call her Dinah to avoid confusion. No, Dinah is this person. Yes. She's our new Black Canary, and oh boy, she's one of my favourite characters. I already said I love the sound of her canary scream. And like you said, last episode you wanted to know how her, she got her scream, and this episode you got it, it turns out we were partly watching an episode of The Flash. And <laughs> it opened like a season one episode of The Flash. Usually yeah. that's, season one would always open with showing us how a new meta was born in the Particle Accelerator. Turns out Dinah was just from... Central City. Sometimes the easiest answer is always the the one we get. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's how she got her powers. Also, how the villain of this episode got his powers too. Yeah. I forgot. I always forget that the villains are, are meta until we get to it. It's like, oh yeah, we got another villain. I just love that bit where he's calling Sing, and then Barry runs and puts a note saying, "Yep, he's legit. He knows I know, me." That, that was a fun bit. We had another tiny little crossover. Because yeah, like he said, you can fake you can fake a voice modulator, but you can't fake knowing the Flash. I love. I do love that. Um, Captain Singh immediately trusts him, though. The fact that Captain Singh's like, "Yeah, I'll trust a Green Arrow." I love that. Because you've never really thought about it, but it's great. The one thing I find crazy is, I know Barry's fast, but that's still fast. Like, you have to assume Barry instantly sees his phone's like, shit, I know what to do. Run, go. Yeah. Because while on the phone, but I was going to say while on the phone, Oliver would have had to text Barry, but we didn't see that. So maybe Curtis behind Oliver sent a message to Barry saying, hey, can you do this for us? And I guess Barry wasn't busy in the middle of something, he was able to just run over there. I don't know, but it's a fun little scene, but I do like it. I always love when they do these, you know, it is funny I that... mean, last time, The Flash went to Supergirl, so here I we know, go. I know, I do find it funny that these two episodes in a row, that we have two really tiny crossovers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but again, this episode was flawless. It had three real stories, and all of them were good. Yeah. So, we'll... Like we said, T we've got Dinah Drake, but she calls herself Tina, which throws you off. But yeah, she's called Dinah, as she says at the end. She's going to become our Black Canary. She's great in this episode. You get a lot. You get a nice scene with Curtis and Renee once again. Curtis and Renee always have good scenes again. Yeah. Like I said, we've got Curtis and Renee good scenes. We've got Dinah being amazing. We're starting to really build the foundation of what she makes. She did end up killing the guy, but. I whatever. like that though. I actually think that's better than if you know he had talked her down. Yeah. I actually like that ending a bit better because, as she says, what would Vincent do? And that is what she what he would have done. For one, yeah, I was like, what would he do? It's like, this is what he'd do, you idiot. But still, I like that moment. And honestly, I love her. She's one of my favourite characters. Yeah. But you see, Dinah, you spend all that time trying to get to avenge him. But once you've done that, now what? Well, that's the so point. Now, now she can. You are deciding to, I guess, take the offer. But it's well, that's the point, and that's all of her says. That's not. I found it a bit weird how easily he trusted her with his identity. Well, she could have told people. That's always a problem with these shows, but oh well. They just take the chance, and it turns out okay. I guess. One day, I want a time when a hero takes a chance on someone and it goes wrong. You mean like um. You mean like, oh, for God, I forgot her name already. The stupid girl we had at the beginning of the season. Evelyn? Yeah, Evelyn did that. Evelyn went and told Prometheus everything. Mm. So I guess that counts. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so there you go. But, okay, getting off of Dinah for a minute, we get one of my favourite flashback episodes in the history of flashbacks. Talia. Talia's here, and this is a, literally the birth of... 
the vigilante, if you will. Yeah, I guess so. This is the birth of the vigilante. I mean, think about it. We are halfway through the season. Half a season left of flashbacks till we have to connect to season one. So, you know, think about season... we got to be ready and... I love that sequence where, I mean, I, I, it's cheesy, but I love it. They play the music, they do all that cool stuff, and it's like, yeah, we finally get it. We get, we finally get the transformation from the Oliver who's confused about all the crap he's done to the Oliver we're going to see in yeah, season is, one. It is great that they brought up Yao Fei, considering he's what started it all, and that's whose hood he starts wearing. And they do actually make a sly reference to the fact that she uses a Lazarus pit, which I like. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, he does mention he can't be that old. Yeah, Yeah. so I like that, and yeah, honestly, it's one of the best sequences, because yeah, I mean, think about everything you see in season one, and Oliver's all cool, calm, and in charge, and this is how we get from the Oliver to that Oliver, and one of the best flashbacks in season five, and probably one of my favorite flashbacks ever. But yeah, great sequence, great for Talia, and Talia's a fun character too. We're not done with her. And then it's not a major plot, but the Diggle story is sorted out with the help of Felicity and someone who doesn't actually give her a name. So I just like to jokingly call her Felicity Jr. because I never remember her name. <laughs> but she works for something called Helix. I think she gave her, her hacker name, but not her name. Their hacker names are stupid. But whatever, yeah. Three great stories, because the Felicity story isn't super exciting, but I like where it goes. Yeah. And it's one of the better Felicity stories, thank God. And yeah, it's fun to meet this new character. We're meeting a lot of good new characters in this episode. So, and I have to give credit to that fight scene at the end when, like, You've, where they fight all the people on the roof and you get Oliver with the helicopter and he swings around on a helicopter and hits all the people. That was such a cool fight. The scene. only person who didn't do much interesting was Rory. Yeah, I feel like Rory was the one person who was kind of benched, but I figured, yeah, I guess they thought it would have been a bit too crowded if you had Rory join in with finding um, Dinah. Yeah. And I guess they didn't really have anything else for him to do. But, oh, well, what are you going to do? But, yeah, this was... Great episode, three great stories, love Dinah, love where Felicity stuff is going, amazing flashback. I'm giving it a 9.5. Yeah, I'll go 8.5. I was so tempted to almost go 9. Yeah, I'm giving, yeah I'll go 9.5. Mm. God, I can't believe it. It's one of the best episodes and I'm so happy with season 5. Season 5 has some of my absolute favourite episodes and this is one of them. And yeah, okay. one of my favourite episodes, love Tina. Anyway... We didn't really get a cliffhanger. That's fine. What's the next episode called? Brother. Well, I know what we're dealing with. And okay. you'll have to find out what that refers to. Yeah. I mean, you know what it means, but it could mean in all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I t and yeah. Because usually the name doesn't really refer to the flashbacks, unless it's a double meaning where it refers to the present and flashbacks. Like this one did, because it's a second chance for Oliver to yeah, redeem yeah, himself. Yeah. But usually the name does not refer to only the flashbacks, which makes me think maybe the brother's going to get involved in the present. Unless it's like one of those episodes which... In season one and two, we both had episodes which were only focused on the flashbacks. Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong, those were good episodes, and I don't even... But yeah, and... But still, Second Chances was used a lot in this episode, and yeah, it refers to both, you know, Dinah getting its second chance, the team being a second chance, Felicity's second chance of being a hacktivist, Diggle's second chance, Oliver in the past having a second chance to become somebody else, but yeah... Anyway, enough of this. And I'm karate getting a second chance at being in the Olympics because Curtis said it wouldn't be there until 2020. However, you Googled it and you said it was 2016. Yeah. And it was in. Anyway, enough of this amazing Arrow episode. Wow, this was really good. What a high note to end things on. We'll see you next time for more Arrow and other things as well. See, see you, you next, next time, guys. guys.